Hello everybody and welcome back to Victoria 3, where this might be the penultimate episode. I'm not entirely sure what that timing is going to work out as. We've got maybe two, maybe three episodes left. It kind of depends on how much we run the clock forward, I suppose. Well, taking a look at our constructions here, we absolutely want to continue to work on these barracks. I don't really want to delay our constructions too much more from here, but I do want to think about some expansion. So taking a look at our infamy here, we're at 18.8. How much infamy would be... It's an unavailable play right now, but would be making a protector to Poland. 36, okay. That's a fair amount. The question is, would Britain or the U.S. get involved if we were to do that? And the answer is probably? Probably. We could see about attacking Sindh. What would that be for... And, and I mean, we're currently in this war. We'll have to wait for that to end. But what, what would that be for planning purposes? Eight infamy. We could actually do that right now without going up above 25, I think. No, not quite. We're at 18.7. Okay. So it would be close, but it would be a little bit. That is an option. No doubt about it. We did just discover additional oil, and there is this war breaking out over here in Germany, which seems vaguely interesting. We can't actually make any additional oil rigs. Okay, noted. So these guys capitulated. Wonderful. And oil is indeed the future. So that sounds absolutely great. And the Grand Exhibition is being awaited right now. It'll time out in four years. Okay, sounds good. So no problem whatsoever there. The question is, this diplomatic play in Poland, is anybody actually that matters going to get involved? I don't think so. I mean, Poland themselves aren't involved in this. It's just in this area. And I'm, I'm mostly seeing if Britain or the US decides to get involved. They're the two potential problems for us. And we'll see how that goes. I do want to talk a little bit about what our plan is after this particular game ends. We've not been importing up until now, but I kind of want to import this into Hearts of Iron. Mostly because Victoria's short, right? Victoria does not give a lot of time, and honestly, neither does Hearts of Iron. So I kind of want to combine those two together into a sort of mini mega campaign within the mega campaign, and then look to unify the planet and go to Stellaris after that. That would be the overall idea, anyway. I think that's what I'm leaning towards doing right now. Now, landing craft have been unlocked. That is convenient. There are a lot of wars breaking out. Interesting. Most of these are not particularly impactful wars. So that is definitely noted for the time being. I want to check in on our innovation cap here. Okay, we've got plenty of innovation cap. I'm not concerned about that. We're going to get pasteurization in four weeks, and we are definitely building up a lot of finances. No doubt about that. How are we doing on the power plants and railways? That's saying okay. Britain sides with Belgium in the diplomatic play against communist Hawaii. Okay, so we're having an issue with infrastructure up over here. I mean, this is already subsidized. This is just people don't want to work in the power plant. Or rather, not, not in the power plant. In the railway? Yeah, that's mostly what that boils down to. We just don't have enough people there. So market access in Smolensk is a little bit on the low side. This just needs to be expanded, this railway. So that is okay. We can definitely do that. We'll get that underway. These barracks are going to be all completed relatively soon. We're working our way through them pretty quickly. Korea has sided with the Japanese Shogun. Okay. Their industries are vital to our nation. I mean, actually, kind of. But we do not reward negligence. So that'll be fine. I do want to check in. We're at 82 legitimate government. Okay, that seems reasonably fine. I'm considering enacting Council Republic, but I'm not sure that we actually want that. So there's pasteurization unlocked. So that's great. This epidemic here should end, right? We need to have an Encourage Agricultural Industry Decree active in at least 75 states for one year after discovering a solution. Okay, so what states are affected? How do we know what states are affected? Okay, 46 out of 52. 
currently fulfill the requirement. So this would need to be in six states. What six states? Well, it would be silk state or states with silk plantations, right? That would be the idea here. So we can go in and look at that. Alternatively, we, we can just go to our decrees and encourage agricultural industry. And can we see from here? No, these are all pretty much identical. Okay, and it would need to be six states. So our authority would need to be changed. Noted. So we will have to go into our silk plantations here. Uzbekia and Greater Caucasus. Okay. And let's do sort by name here. Uzbekia. Oh, that was not what I wanted. Uzbekia and Upper Caucasus. G was it Greater Caucasus? Greater Caucasus. Okay. What others do we need? The next one would be Turkmenia and Armenia. Okay. So that is reasonably fine. Encouraging agriculture industry in... Armenia, and in, what was the other one? Turkmenia. There we go. Okay. So that seems fine. Those decrees have been, hang on, this is resource industry. Stop it. Let's not do those. We wanted agricultural industry. Okay. Armenia is already there. Oh, it was the other one that I didn't do correctly. Okay. Greater Caucasus. <laughs> this is slightly awkward the way that we have to do this. Uzbekia. Okay, this is correct. So now we're going to need a little bit of authority. So we need to go into our budget. I'm going to cancel our liquor consumption tax. That puts us at 187, and now I'm going to cancel our luxury clothes consumption tax. That puts us at 287. So now we can encourage agriculture industry in the other two remaining locations, which is Western Afghanistan and Azerbaijan. Okay. So, encourage agricultural industry in Western Afghanistan and in Azerbaijan. There we go. That should do the trick. We've researched pasteurization at this point. And I do want to head in here. We should have some upgrades that we can do here. Refrigerated storage. Yes, do that. That might create some issues with electricity. We'll see. We can do the same thing with fishing wharves as as well as with whaling stations. So that'll be fine. Any other upgrades that need to be done here? Well, these are rubber, and we don't really have enough rubber to do this. Although, this would be considered positive at this point. But this is going to create a shortage of rubber, as well as steel. So for the moment, I'm not sure that we want to do that. We need a significantly larger source of rubber. We can definitely go to brine electrolysis for our explosives factories. I don't think we need rayon. That is not a thing that we need at this moment. Anything else through here that needs to be done? At this moment, that is a no. Okay, so we do need a research, and what research do we want to go for? Well, probably something along the lines of just the bolt-action rifle. We'll just get that done. 11 months left on that. That sounds good. At least 75% of states. Fascinating. Okay. Well, it should be, at this point, completed. The, the Pabrian epidemic. In theory. But it'll take a year. So that's reasonably fine. Reasonably fine, indeed. The root of the problem. Okay, we could definitely encourage... Ah... Yes. So, we would pioneer the mitigation. Done. So, that boosts up our prestige. At this point, we should have these decrees still active, and we do. Yes. So, we've learned how to resolve it. We just needed that event. Now, we need the decree active for at least one year after that. So, September of 1929 should end that epidemic. In theory, anyway. So that seems reasonably good. I do want to think about some form of military expansion. We're down to 16.6. .6. We could do this on Borneo, something like Sintang. They're currently fighting this aristocratic revolt. They have an obligation to Italy. Okay. I'm wondering right now, do they have rubber plantations? The answer is... Yes, but it's zero size. Okay. So that's noted. There's also, like, Kutai down over here. I want to check in on their states. 
No rubber plantations here. Okay. And down in Banjar, we do see rubber plantations there. Okay. It would be a little bit difficult to get there. Samba's here is a puppet of the Dutch East Indies. We can probably fight, fight the Dutch East Indies. So I would be interested in potentially doing that in a broad manner. So that would mean attacking Sambas here. So that would mean transfer subject, 1.9 infamy. For this, that would be 2.2 infamy. This we would have to like annex the state. So that would be taking the state of West Borneo. Where is that in here? Here it is. So conquer state, that would be 8.5 infamy. And then Banjar, this would be a transfer subject. 2.7. Okay, so we can't do that until six, or rather 1930, right? That is understood. I would like to attack Kutai. I think that that's a reasonable thing to do. So if we make protectorate here, that would be 2.2 infamy. That's not a lot of infamy. They'll not accept this. Let's see what happens here. It's only 2.2 infamy. Seems reasonably okay. So a front breaks out here. That's nice. And I'm going to wait to mobilize these guys. Katai, of course, refuses the demands, which is not shocking. Let's continue to expand in Borneo for now. We do want to expand our amount of rubber. So that'll be okay. This army here is the one I'm planning to mobilize. We've got plenty of cash for it. So in fact, we can mobilize that right now and just send that right on over. We're not concerned about our cash. In fact, we might want to cut our taxes again. I'm going to. I'm going to cut us down to very low taxes and that should be absolutely fine here. We're approaching our maximum amount of taxes or rather our maximum amount of gold reserves. So that seems absolutely fine. Now the question is, is anyone going to join this? Britain would actually join on our side? Which is mildly remarkable. That's more than mildly remarkable. That's actually quite remarkable. Fascinating. That is a very, very interesting thing indeed. So this war is going to break out, and I think we'll be okay on that front. What just happened over here? Sintang arist aristocratic. Oh, the Ottoman Empire wants to enter into a defensive pact with us. Are we interested in that? Yes. We are, I think. Also, Romania. I think we'll say no to Romania. Okay. That seems reasonably fine. We might look to make Ro Romania into a protectorate fairly soon. So that would be down over here, right? That would be 24 infamy. That is noted. That also might be a Hearts of Iron thing that we look to do. But I think I've pretty well decided to import this into Hearts of Iron. And from there, just go for a world conquest. That would be the ideal scenario going into Stellaris because we need the, the world unified for Stellaris, right? So that would seem like an interesting way to go. That would mean that essentially we end up playing Space Russia, which is not exactly what, how I anticipated this to uh, make its way to the end with the, with the way we started Carpetania. <laughs> this is uh, kind of meandered, but it's interesting. I, I like it. It's a good thing. It, it's kept things kind of fresh. At, honestly, at this point, if I was doing a normal mega campaign, we might have had world domination a while ago at this point. So there is that. Like, world domination in Europa is, in my opinion, super easy if you actually, like, go for it. I mean, Kutai back down. Okay, beautiful. That's absolutely wonderful. So, radicals from standard of living decreases. Sure, we'll get a rich political scene. That seems fine. 20% of pops in Ingria becoming more loyalist. We'll do it. It's expensive, but we'll do it. So Katai is under our control right now, and we're going to begin improving relations with them. Our next step is to go for Sintang, right? I'm wondering how this war is playing out. Do either of these have an army? Yes. So that should be over. They barely have an army, but they do have an army. Okay. There's an enact presidential republic political movement. 
do we want to do that? I kind of want to stay autocratic, to be honest. Going into Hearts of Iron, I feel like that'll be useful. Like, we need to think about how we're going to drive up the global tension in Hearts of Iron, right? We're going to be basically the driver of that. That's how that's going to work. Now, all of this is contingent on the fact that there is a functional Victoria 3 to Hearts of Iron 4 converter. There probably is. I haven't looked into it. I know that that is a thing that tends to happen, but this is contingent on that. If that doesn't end up happening, we'll probably just play as the Soviet Union, but I would prefer not to do that. I really kind of want to import this. This is an interesting setup as far as I'm concerned. So that will definitely be fascinating. We're just waiting at this point for this war to end, which will be very, very soon. And then we're going to go after this area. After that, all we'll, we'll need to conquer all of Borneo is this little bit of Prussia. Which Prussia isn't all that strong. And then taking this bit from the East Indies. So that'll definitely be a thing. Octoberist party momentum, huh? Okay, well, how's that election going? The Octoberist party is currently winning, but that's fine. Cool. Great Britain sided with the Netherlands in the diplomatic play against Sambas. Okay. Mildly awkward for them. But we're just waiting for this war to end. It will end very, very soon. Like, we can see here. We can actually go into the make peace here, and we can see the capitulation desire here is actually minus 181, but it's minus 80 here. Yeah, it's these guys who would capitulate. So that seems absolutely fine. We're just going to go in and make them our protectorate as soon as we're done with that. Or as soon as they're done with that. And then we'll attach the, attack the Dutch East Indies next year. As far as our attacks in Europe go, the main problem here is that this might end up having to wait until Hearts of Iron because of the amount of infamy that it generates. Things like attacking Ukraine, Poland. Europe is difficult. There's a lot of infamy over there. So we'll see. For the time being, getting Borneo is very good for us. Having a source of rubber and oil down here would be great. And I mean, ultimately, we can move our way down here pretty quickly and take a lot of territory down that way. Britain is going to be a problem for us in Hearts of Iron. No doubt about that. We can very clearly state that. So, Kutai, I would like to lower autonomy here. I think that we have to wait until our truce is done. Yeah, that's fine. Any moment now, this war will end. They're minus 97, so yeah. It will be over now. Okay, so at this point, I want to just hop into Sintiang. And we want to make Protectorate. I don't want to conquer state here. I don't want the extra infamy. We're interested in just making the Protectorate. So that'll be fine. 2.1 infamy sounds good. Overly enthusiastic partisans, huh? Okay. Uh, the Party of Peaceful Renovation can continue. That's fine. I'm not going to mobilize the 10th here. In fact, we might just mobilize the 11th. We probably don't need any more than the 11th. Why don't you head on over? That'll be fine. Cool. So we'll just get in position there, and I don't expect anybody to join in on this. Britain would not join us, which is not shocking, necessarily. We're at 17.1 infamy right now. And that all looks good. I do believe that this epidemic is dealt with. In theory. Potentially. We could also just get rid of all of our silk plantations and cause it to fail, but... We don't want it to fail. We want it to be completed successfully. So this should be done, I believe, in September. And that should be okay. Hang on, what's going on down here? Sambas is independent now. Ah, I see. I missed this diplomatic play. I shouldn't have. I would have interfered in this and helped them achieve their independence briefly. Very briefly. That's unfortunate. That's a missed opportunity, but I did not notice that. I should have. I absolutely should have. My own fault. 
Gold has been depleted in Outer Manchuria, and that is unfortunate, but that does, of course, mean that we can build gold mines there, and we will at the top priority. We're building a lot of oil rigs right now, and that seems reasonably fine. More oil is being discovered, and this war is going to break out very, very shortly. Cool. As far as attacking Ukraine goes, I would love to do that. They do have that alliance with Romania. Problem is, there's a lot of infamy with breaking in over here, and I don't want Britain and the U.S. to get involved with that. That would be the core issue, right? Bolt-action rifles for the arms industries have been finished up, leading to automatic machine guns. That seems good. We'll take the automatic machine guns, and that does mean that we can boost up our arms industries, correct? Correct. We'll definitely do that. Okay. Fantastic. So this war is going to break out very shortly. No one is going to interfere here. They are currently fearful. It's almost certain they'll back down. So hopefully they do. But if they don't, we'll conquer them. No problem. Everybody's declaring neutrality, which of course is expected. Momentum to the Octoberist party. Mm, okay, Sintang did indeed back down. So they are now our vassals. Fantastic. So now we just need our truce with the Dutch East Indies to end. We could attack Prussia up over here. With the idea here being conquering the state of North Borneo. And not really anything else. They have an 8% chance of acceptance. The question is, what other fronts would break out? There'd be this front over here with Lithuania. And who are they allied with? Nobody really. They have a few protectorates that probably don't matter. Okay. There's also a secession movement growing in our country, which is, you know, rude. This would be North Borneo. Okay. So North Borneo is this state here. That is noted. I do want to grab our army that's over here. Where are you? Why don't I see our armies here? That's interesting. Have our armies been removed from this area already? We should have Baltic HQ, Baltic HQ, Persia, Russia, Russia, Indonesia. So the 10th. Currently stationed here. Yes, that is correct. Okay, we're going to let these guys break free. We don't really have an option and we'll have to crush them. That's reasonably fine. I was planning on attacking Prussia, but not... Hang on. Sambas is no longer allied over here. Fascinating. I'm going to make Protectorate on them. And there's the Papery Neck Epidemic successfully completed. That sounds good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mobilize these guys and move them down to this front. When this breaks away, these guys should be freed up, or at, rather should still be in this location. So in theory, that should be fine. But if these guys break away, they're, they're, they're going to have a fairly powerful army here, I think. Well, no, this army is supplied from elsewhere, isn't it? It's just stationed here. So that should be okay. The epidemic is, of course, over. And we're going to reactivate our silk industries. There's no time to waste. Beautiful. We do have a free government reform here, but we're already on the most legitimacy government. So that seems fine. The secession is going to be happening. It almost looks like these are occupied, but that's just the equator. Okay, <laughs> sure. Absolutely fine. Absolutely A-OK. -okay. So that all looks good. I think that there's no significant problem here. Yeah, the Dayak secession is going to happen, but it doesn't matter because we can just leave these guys here and then they'll head up over here when they're done. Oil discovered in Dagestan seems okay, but it is time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we're going to continue to crush our holdings over here in Borneo. There won't be any major problems with that. And we'll just crush this very, very quickly and make our way in over here. That should be fine. 
You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Shadow Wolf, Kentogan, Ali Lee, Upper Cumberland Gamers, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman 12 UK, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.